Oh yeah, the shirt fits in the frame. Everyone's gonna read that. They're gonna see that my shirt says, I'm Ryan and I'm a moron. everyone, I'm Ryan. And you're a moron. <laughs> uh, and I'm Steven. This is 60 Cycle Home the Guitar. Buying, selling, training, modding, fixing, breaking, reviewing, playing. Podcast. <laughs> we have a topic suggestion here. Well, it's not really a topic suggestion. He asked to the general Facebook group uh, yesterday when this was recorded. At 8.53 a.m. Can someone please recommend me a good onset guitar? I already have too many offset ones. So, Steve, good onset guitars for your onset guitarists. I'm talking guitars mm -hmm. that are symmetrical mm -hmm. at the waist. Uh, you know, they're not tilted in any sort of way. Like, what's a good, like, onset guitar to start off with? So, if you're new to onset guitars, you know? SG. SG? SG. That's a solid onset guitar. That's very set on. Yeah. What kind of music do uh, onset guitars make? Nickelback. <laughs> Nickelback is for... But to, like when I think Nickelback, that's like PRS's, right? Yeah, also great onset guitars. Are PRS's onset guitars? I mean, their horns are kind of offset, yeah. but then the waist is onset. I mean, technically the horns on an SG are offset. Like you think about... I mean, the normal kind of music that you make with offset guitars, mm -hmm. kind of like indie, Sonic Youth, surf, grunge, punk, you know, jazz, emo. emo, all that normal kind of music that we all make with very normal on offset guitars. Uh -huh. So like an onset guitar, like what do you even like? What kind of what do you even play with that? It's hard to um, think like in genre specific play, terms. Um Metal, new metal. Mm. There's a lot of offset metal guitars, though. Uh, heavy metal. Oh, yeah. Rap metal. All uh, five black sub metal, genres of metal. Death metal. Actually, death metal? No, Doom. I'm, Doom is with offsets. No, people play like Les Pauls and stuff in Doom. That's true. That's true. Yeah, and SG. Doom can go either way. Yeah, yeah. Mm. I, I think like onset guitars are for like. Yeah, is there clearly country. like country? <laughs> country, yeah, country's onset guitars, country metal, country metal, jazz, jazz metal. Um. <laughs> Wait, didn't we already establish jazz was up for offset guitars? <laughs> yeah, it goes both ways. Hence, though. jazz master. Right, right. I mean, clearly the master of jazz, the guitar that has been used for jazz since its invention. Mm -hmm since mm -hmm. its inception like that became the guitar for jazz it is in the name all other guitars that were used for jazz were abandoned it is funny like we're making jokes it is funny to think about like the cultural weight that offset guitars have mm -hmm. in guitar culture but the there's clearly an opposite to that you have your offset guitars which have a tilted waist and then you have something that's never been mentioned before, before this comment, onset guitars, which are all other guitars. What's funny is I was trying to think about that. And when I see the word, the phrase onset guitars in my head, I just think of German carved guitars. Interesting. Like I think of inset guitars. Ah, so there's inset and there's onset. So like inset is like something like you have like inlays. Yeah. And then there's onlays. <laughs> are, are you sure they're not inlays and outlays <laughs> they might be outlays but to think in terms of like all other guitars that are not offsets or onsets mm -hmm. i mean it's funny but it's not wrong <laughs> <laughs> i mean there's on is it i, I feel like it'd be because it doesn't, it doesn't work to call them symmetrical or they're not not like, symmetrical. Because all guitars are not symmetrical. Well, some guitars, I there mean, are uh, very few symmetrical guitars. Like even an SG is not symmetrical. Yeah, yeah. Like Les Paul uh, double cut. Les Paul no cut. <laughs> That's just a dreadnought. Like yeah, dreadnoughts are 
symmetrical guitars. Yeah. That's really the the other side of this. There's your normal guitars that I'm, are... I'm, I'm looking around, so I think there's only two symmetrical guitars in this room. The V is pretty symmetrical. The... Oh, maybe three. The, maybe the, three. The bass is... The you bass. guys can see it. The bass is symmetrical. Um... Yeah, I think there's three. Yeah, you might be right. The Lucite one is the Bad Cat symmetrical. The Bad Cat is symmetrical. Yeah, for That's sure. That's it. That's all of them. That's all of them. I've we only solved got it. Three. Well, I have an acoustic in a case back there where I can't even reach it. I'm safe from it because it's behind <laughs> a, a cage. It's behind boxes right now. Uh, so there are four onset guitars. I'm what I'm about to pitch is that onset guitars are not all other guitars other than offset there's the middle guitars which are your normal and onset are only symmetrical onset are only fully symmetrical mm, guitars mm-hmm, mm-hmm. so an onset guitar is a fully symmetrical guitar double cut tellies are onset god double cut tellies are gross i know but i kind of like them no. uh are wrong our lead fender leads symmetrical i don't think so i think they're pretty close you to not, it you don't have one anymore huh I mean, like the Yamaha double cuts. Those are symmetrical. Are symmetrical. Like, uh, what is it? The Melody Maker double cuts are symmetrical. Yeah. So yeah, you've got you've got your offsets on oh, one yeah. side the, of the extreme. The leads are definitely not symmetrical. Oh, you're right. Yeah, one of the horns is shorter. So you've got your very clearly offsets on one side of the spectrum, mm-hmm. and then you mm-hmm. have your onsets on the other side of the spectrum. What are we calling everything in the middle that, you know, your Strats, your Les Pauls, your Telecasters, your SGs, all these guitars that are not symmetrical, but they're also not offset because the waist is level. Like we just call them regular guitars? Yeah, pretty I much. I feel like we need a creative name for that. No. Well, even offsets is kind of like, some of the guitars that are labeled as offsets are barely offset there's offset there's onset what's in between off and on um blend 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 set blend set or like i can't i don't know (laughs) regular set guys suggest us like names for normal guitars (laughs) in the comment section if there's onset and there's onset then there has to be something in the middle, right? Because like, okay, so this is the whole thing. I mean, I guess it's there. I feel like all, so many offset guitars are offset in multiple locations, but in like, dramatic ways. But the Fender Mustang is considered an offset because the waist is offset. In my head, I understand. I this is where almost it's like an offset guitar. Is has less to do with the actual design and more to do with the genre it's associated with. I think I think horns get a pass, like the horns on a guitar. Oh yeah, absolutely. Like it doesn't matter. So maybe, hmm, but yeah, that's, it doesn't come into factor as far as offset and regular set. Mm-hmm. But onset guitars cannot have asymmetrical horns. No, so so offsets are. Uh, Somebody tried to break it down. I don't know if it's anything formalized by anybody because I think it's just a term that somebody... I don't know if anyone, like, actually... It's the waist. It's the waist, and it's somebody... And technically, strats do not have a symmetrical waist. Right there is higher than right there, yeah. so it's offset. But it's, it's not just that it's offset. It has to be, like, the, the center point of... Like, people have tried to break it down where the center point of the waist on each side has to be offset... By more than ten degrees. Oh my gosh! We have to bring in like. Well, a- no, because 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 technically strats are offset, right? Like they're not perfectly, but it's very minimal, right? And the other side of that is the Mustang waist is very offset, but in my head, like when I see a Mustang, because it doesn't have it's an butt. offset, but yeah, it's butt is symmetrical. Like because most of these again, the uh, the Cyclone, I think. The cyclone is kind of borderline. Um, it's hard to tell. Is it? Is it have an offset butt? No, the butt is is fairly it's fairly symmetrical. symmetrical. Yeah, but like your supersonic over here, your jazz master, your jaguar. Uh, this it's pronounced jaguar. Jag jaguar. Um, <laughs> the uh, the starcaster jaguar like, jaguar. 
Uh, those are all, you know, they're offset all over. Yeah, yeah. I like guitars that are offset all, all over, but I like, have plenty of guitars that aren't. The other side of that is like the Manta Ray is not offset. Technically, it's not because the waist is symmetrical, but every other part of it is <laughs> is, is asymmetrical. <laughs> I honestly think like the cultural division between guitar styles over a simple detail of an angle at the waist of the guitar is silly. Like it's, it's like people who say like, Oh, I hate telecasters, but I like this one because it's got double humbuckers or whatever. It's like, okay. Like it's like people who are like, I hate Stratocasters, but I like this one because it's mine. Right. <laughs> like you <laughs> No, that you know, was a callback, you know, like, like people say, well, I just I love offsets, and they get they get a Jaguar with EMGs in it and a Floyd Rose or something like that. It's like, do you really love offsets, or you just wanted that shape? Well, I see pe people are gushing over. We talked, I think we talked about it. The the Fender uh, Ultra Lux right. Jazz Master that's coming out, and it's like it it's a hardtail. It's like it's, it's not a Jaguar <laughs> scale because it was a, it was an ultra, ultra Lux Jaguar, right? I th I for oh yeah no yeah you're right it's a jaguar but it's jazz master Jag scale yeah but it's jazz master scale it's hardtail it's all of these other things where you're just like yeah yo what maybe other set is the middle offset other set onset okay that sounds right I can live with that yeah uh yeah I just uh I don't know man uh up until what like. Are offset guitars only cool right now because we all grew up on like re reject bands that played offsets? Here's the thing, Steve. This just occurred to me. My entire guitar playing life, I've seen people in forums, I've heard people talking, and it's been the same story for 25 years or whatever, how, however long I've been playing. Mm -hmm. Probably nearly 30 years at this point. People have always said, oh man, yeah, like. <laughs> Jazz Masters and Mustangs and blah, blah, blah are only popular right now because of this fad that's going on. And we've been stuck in this fad for 30 years. It's not a fad anymore. I'm not saying it's a fad. When but I'm it's like when, when in, in the 90s, like, oh, you know, you know, like 10 years ago, you can buy these all for a couple hundred bucks because no one wanted them. And then Kurt Cobain happened, blah, blah, blah. And then you know, like the same thing happening. And like, no one wanted all of these. And they were so cheap. And then like all this indie music happened, blah, blah, blah. And then, and like, and then like, oh, and then all these praise and worshipers wanted all these offset guitars, blah, blah, blah. And just drive the price up. It's like, no, they've been in style for three decades now. And I wasn't around before that to see how in style or well, out of style they I mean, were. Before, before, uh, bef slightly before Nirvana, what Sonic Youth was using them. Right. And then before Sonic Youth, uh, maybe, you know, there's probably some artists in between, but certainly Elvis I'm Costello almost, yeah, used them. I'm almost certain I've seen, you know, old music videos of, all sorts of new wave bands playing isn't there a various da offsets. Isn't there like a David Bowie? Uh, I feel like there's a David Bowie uh, offset for some reason. Oh, and freaking um, the Smiths. Right. Uh, uh, Johnny oh, Marr. Johnny Marr. I wanted to say Mick Mars. I'm like, wrong band. Wrong Marr. Wrong, wrong Marr. <laughs> Bill Marr. The Bill Marr so Jazz is this Master. Just, is this just like cultural branding that we're just like, oh yeah, this is a funky, weird guitar. And only like some people like it sometimes when it's only in, only when it's in style every once, every couple decades or something. But in reality, it's been in style consistently. These guitars have been in style consistently for decades now. So what are we even talking I about anymore? I think, I think there's, I think there is value on both I think there's good people on both sides. Uh, <laughs> no, okay. So, so what I mean by that is, is I think there is there's some truth to the fact that these instruments weren't popular. I yeah, I think there was there was a period of time where they were not popular anymore. But that time period was so long ago that it's not even worth mentioning in a modern context. Like saying mm. that that jazz masters and mustangs and jaguars 
haven't been popular up until a recent explosion in a fad or something like that is bonkers because they have been popular the entire time I've been playing guitar. Right. Like, and increasing in popularity, so, so but like still popular. Yeah. So what I mean, is, and this is just thinking about this, trying to think about it more objectively. Um, the Mustang wasn't made from 1983 to 1989. It just didn't exist. Sure. Uh, the Jazz Master was not made. Oh, the Jazz Master only took a break for four years from 1981 to 1983. But you think about what was going on with Fender in that time period. Yeah. Like, that's not a surprise. Uh, and I think the Fender Jag had, a t- had like, the longest stint. of Right. Uh, the Jaguar is honestly probably the most niche instrument. Out yeah, of the, the, the Jag was not made in the... U- and this is, I think, U- specifically U.S. production because sure. I believe Japanese production continued during this time. Uh, but from 1976 to 1998, uh, Fender did not make a a no, I guess it would be a non export model. Right. Like there wasn't a Fender USA Jag until 1999. Right. So in my at least for the Jag and for all of these different models, at least makes me think that in the 80s there wasn't enough demand for at least the Mustang and, and the Jag. That they were taken off. Um, and the Mustang, at least, was a student guitar. So maybe the whole thing about, like, oh, offsets is really only true about the short scale offsets, the Mustang and the Jaguar, and not the Jazz Master. I feel like the Jazz Masters have always been a harder sell anyway. The Jazz Masters have? Yeah. In some way, it's like, I I think the Jazz Masters are an easier, easier sell than sell? the Jaguar. Well, I'm saying in terms of like the art, like I feel like the Jazz Master hasn't is less. I'm saying it's a harder sell in terms of like the popularity wave. I think it's most popular now, but I think also kind of feel like the Jazz Master hasn't. It's had less of an ebb and flow because it's the popularity of it has mostly been low until recently. I feel like it's it's been popular longer than we care to admit. Maybe it's just the circles I run in online, you know, like the, you know, surf oriented stuff and like, and true, and true. whatnot, but it's been more popular than we care. How long does, admit. how long do you think something has to be popular before you're like, oh, it's just a fad. The fact that, oh, it'll, well, it's not about how it's about if it terminates being popular. And I think what I'm trying to say is that I haven't seen a period in time in the past 30 years where jazz masters have lost popularity it's been uphill every year more and more popularity okay, sure, the entire sure. three decades that i've been playing guitar I've, i'd say they've been increasing in popularity but i think if you were to compare like the popularity from 1990 to 2000 to the popularity from like 2010 to 2020 it would feel like there is a significant increase Yes, but that where's is not the, that it's not linear, that it's more of an S shape. Where in the past 30 years has there been a dead spot where people are like, you know what? Offsets are out. No one wants these. That's anymore. what I'm saying. They haven't been out, but I'm saying like it's been okay. The last time there was it's a been dead like spot? alternative, alternative, alternative. And then somewhere maybe say like 2008, it goes like vertical and it jumps. No, I think that vertical jump is way earlier than you realize that vertical jump in popularity was in the nineties and the, you know, the manufacturing didn't catch up to it, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. but people were buying them used and there was plenty of culture around these becoming desirable since the early nineties, like the dead spot right. that, that we consider like, Oh man, that then culturally we're like, Oh, these guitars weren't popular. The dead spot we're thinking of was the beginning, the transition from when surf was popular to psychedelia becoming popular Mm -hmm. like that transition killed off the california aesthetic of surfy kind of offset sort of things and they didn't really come back strong until the 90s so that kind of late 60s through early 80s that was the dead spot culturally Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. where they might have still been produced but they were not 
you know, popular the way. And again, I wasn't around. Right. So maybe I'm missing something. Maybe there were subgenres going on where people still embraced these guitars, or maybe it was all just legacy purchases and stuff like that. But 30 years, three decades of these guitars being popular greatly overshadows 15, 20 yeah. years of I them think, being unpopular. I, I think this is where, um, again, I think it just kind of depends. I think we're saying the same thing, but I think you are, your threshold for culture is just set a lot lower than okay, mine. Sure, sure. So again, Wikipedia, whatever, doesn't matter. It, it basically is confirming what you're saying is that uh, the jazz masters fell out of fashion in the seventies because they were old fashioned kind of old fashioned guitars, you know, in the humbucker era, like right, the jazz right. master doesn't fit in. Uh, and then it mentions kind of how, uh, when Fender discontinued the jazz master in 1980 was when Elvis Costello started getting more popular. So while the guitar itself wasn't being manufactured, uh, there were players who were like indie players like Elvis Costello and, you know, later again, uh, some of these other uh, players. Uh, Robert Smith played a jazz master. Right. Nel, uh, um, who else is on here? I thought Robert Smith there's played, other played a, a bass six. Robert Smith, I think, played, well, a, lot played of a lot of stuff. Yeah. Um, and then, you know, again, when you get into the 90s, you're talking about uh, bands like My Bloody Valentine, Dinosaur right, right. Jr., Sonic Youth. Uh, I'm just, again, kind of looking at the list. I think something that I mean to circle around. Apparently, a Rick Ocasek played a played a. I think it's kind jazz of master. I think I think that the term has outgrown itself mm. because people are. It doesn't mean anything anymore. Off, the, the, the reason onset is funny to us is because offset is kind of ridiculous. It's it's like when you say offset, you have a specific version of a guitar in your mind quirky kind of like fender style pickups that aren't you that aren't strat or telecaster pickups uh offset ways quirky vibrato systems and stuff like that mm -hmm. but offset is being used for guitars that yes have that body but have completely different other features i think a much better way to classify guitars is by their pickup sets I think that makes oh, yeah. Yeah. way more sense than being like, oh, yeah, I really love offset guitars. You love the shape of the guitar? Like, what kind of sound a guitar are you like? Oh, I love the sound of offset guitars. What is that sound? Right. It could be anything. Like, you could have any pickups in an offset guitar mm -hmm. these days. Like, you could have Filtertrons. You could have Telecaster pickups. You could have, uh, you know, lipsticks. You could have EMGs. You could have the hottest humbuckers on the planet. You could, you could have them all. Like, there's no offset sound. So what are we even talking about? I would much rather someone say, like, oh, I love Jazzmaster pickups. Yeah. Or say, I love, you know, I love offset vibratos. Now you I just want people to say, oh, I love Jazzmaster pickups. So you could be like, well, actually... <laughs> <laughs> on many Fender production models, the Jazzmaster pickups are really not wound the way that they were in the 60s. They're actually closer to... Right, I right. I no, but I think I think pickup sets are a much better indication right. of style of guitar than the body shape. Like, well, even, even neck shape is, I think, mm -hmm. more important to the feel of a guitar than the body shape. Mm-hmm. And the vibe of what you're playing. Like, you could be playing, you know, a technical offset. You could be playing something with a jazz master shape, but then it's a squire contemporary jazz master right. with a, you know, a 15 inch radius and EMGs. Yeah. Yeah. Like, that's, that makes sense. That's that makes totally sense. different than what people think of when you say offset. <sighs> yeah. But it is an offset. I mean, you, most, most BC Rich guitars are offset guitars. Now I hate you. <laughs> um, no, I, I, I get what you're saying. Um, because, you know, that is the joke. Like uh, Fender came out a few years ago with the Troublemaker Telly. And now they've had other versions of that. Mm -hmm. um, where it's like, oh, the Troublemaker Telly is a two humbucker, like two classic PAF style humbucker for you know two volume two tone control it's like oh no this is just a, and it's i think even a carved top it's like oh it's a yeah. last paul 
uh, is just in a Telecaster shape. So yeah, you, I think there is a lot of vali validity to that. And I think in the time in my brain, when I start thinking about the rise in popularity of offsets, is actually really a rise in popularity of what they would call the uh, Telemaster guitars. Which were the Jazzmaster guitars that were loaded with Telecaster hardware. I think we could look at the the offset popularity map like for the past 30 years, gaining popularity, a jump. Gaining popularity, a jump. Yeah. So like I think the Telemaster thing, that, that is That was a jump. That was a jump where people were doing a hobbyist thing, like, oh mm -hmm. man, that's cool. A Jazzmaster body with a Telecaster loadout. I want one. I'm gonna order a kit. I'm going to build it myself. And then finally Fender came out with their own. Yeah. Like, I think that, yeah, that represents a jump in the popularity, but we haven't seen a dip. Sure. We've seen these jumps sure. and then a, a slight leveling plateau and then jump in a jump, but we haven't seen like them fall out of favor, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but we have seen, we have seen other things fall out of favor, right? Yeah. I, th I think, you know, like BC rich is a good example. Like yeah. that there used to be a ton of BC riches around you. Like every, you know, pawn shop in America had a ton hanging up. Mm -hmm. Every teenager in America had a BC rich in their, in their bedroom for some reason. And that kind of extreme metal shape has gone out of favor. Where like the metal kids now are, you know, going more like these proggy directions with your headless things and whatnot. Yeah. And that's, that's kind of the direction that's gone. And, you know, kind of metal aggressive shapes have gotten a lot more creative and let, I'm not saying BC riches aren't creative, but you know what I mean? They've become more quirky in a way. Do you think that most people then who say, oh, I like offset guitars. That's the other thing is offset guitars is a pretty wide range. Like, are you, are you talking about jazz master right. or or uh, Mustangs or, or Jag, Jaguars or which are kind of, that's kind of like your classic, your Holy Trinity of offset like guitars, if you, right? If you take a Stratocaster mm -hmm. and you put jazz master pickups in it, wouldn't that appeal to someone who likes offset guitars? <laughs> but that that's, I, I, I don't, I think there's definitely a lot of people who, buy a guitar aesthetically sure with you know with the kind of the mentality which there is a uh, cultural brand with, with kind of a it. mentality of you know a single coil is a single coil is a single coil you know yeah if, if i if you're play given two options and one is a les paul special with p90s and the other is like a Telecaster with P90s, nobody's going to look at, like everyone's going to have an opinion on which one that they like. And they're not going to say, well, I, they're not going to say, well, I'm a P90 guy, so I could just flip a coin. Nah, some people will. I'll just flip a coin because I'm a P90 guy. Right. I could go it doesn't matter as long as there's P90s in there. But I think most people are gonna, either going to say like, well, I'm a Les Paul guy, so give me the Les Paul Jr. Or I'm a Telecaster guy. Uh, I should say person, sorry, guy generically, uh, person. We all know Telecasters dude. are for guys and, you know. And, <laughs> yeah. Uh, you know, uh, so it's like you want a P90 guitar, you're going to get, you're just not grabbing a P90 guitar off the shelf. Sorry, ladies, Telecasters are for boys only. Oh, my God. <laughs> well, <laughs> hi, I'm Ryan and I'm a moron. <laughs> You know what I mean? Like, yeah, th yeah. There's, there's always going to be an aesthetic play. Of course. Um, and I, so I think when, I think most people when they're like, oh, I'm a, I like offsets. If they're, if they have a strong enough opinion to say, I like offsets, they're probably not going for one of these super modern offsets. Sure. Now that being said, I know plenty of people who say, oh, I like Telecasters who like they own one, like they own two Telecasters. One of one is a Cabernita and the other one is like a 72 deluxe. Right. So it's like, they don't even own a traditional. I, for right. what's worth, I don't own a traditional Telecaster. That's true. Uh, I have a Strat and a hum, a Strat pickup and a humbucker in mine. Yeah. Um, I have a more traditional Telecaster. You than do. You. you do. Way more traditional. Yeah. Except it's not a Fender. So not traditional at all. Is yours a Fender? 
Mine's a parts. Yeah. It's a, it's a squire neck. It's Fender style. It's a squire neck. I guess neck. it is a squire neck. Do we even know the pedigree of that body? Nope. I've never gotten a Fender. Like it a, weighs a tr- like a trillion pounds, I don't so think I don't think it's a Fender body. I don't think it's a true Fender body. No. It's your guitar, though. That is for sure. That's your signature yeah. guitar. Um, and then my other Telecaster that I haven't pulled out in an actual long time. I'm not even sure where it is. Uh, is that is a PV. <laughs> So oh, yeah, the PV? Oh, that old PV generation. <laughs> I should pull that one out. You should pull that I out. I need to yeah. see if it works. Last time I had it together, I think I've done some work on it since then. The last time I had it pulled out, the output from the pickups was really bad. If I say that I'm going to pick up an offset guitar, mm-hmm. it's going to be a Jazzmaster, a Jaguar, yeah, a Jag yeah. Sting, a Mustang. Is it good? And it's good. Probably, it's, I'm just, presumably, it's going to be a, a classic loadout. Right. Like if, like I, I'll even call my, my Hallmark an offset, mm-hmm. even though it doesn't have a waist. <laughs> <laughs> you know, so it's like, fu- what's funny uh, about this whole thing, right? We're talking about traditional loadouts. We're right. talking about this and that and whatever. But kind of like I look at, I look at the, uh, the supersonic. Uh-huh. I don't think of that in offset it, terms because it's, it's hot humbuckers right, in a strap right. bridge. Well, so, and that's what I was going to say is like for, most of the components on the Jag Stang are offset components. It's clearly has a Mustang Jaguar pedigree yeah. in the body shape. Well, I think that, but it's got a freaking Strat pickup. The original one, the original, like if they ever, actually, I think the the one that they actually sent Kurt as a prototype had a Demarzio Strat pickup okay. in it and a Demarzio humbucker. So if you, as soon as you put a humbucker into an offset, does it cease being an offset? Here's the rules. Here's the rules. There are three components to the ideal offset recipe. Mm -hmm. Offset body, Mm -hmm. offset bridge and tremolo hardware, offset pickups. You need two out of three to qualify. Jagstain qualifies because it has the body and it has the hardware. hardware. So do telemasters not qualify? Because they only have the body. Everything else is telecaster. Maybe not. Mm. They're more Telecaster than they are offset. So the, but the, then super so, the supersonic. supersonic does not qualify because it's an offset body, but with humbuckers and a Strat trim. So if we put EMGs in your Jaguar, it would still qualify because it hardware. would still have the body and the hardware. Right. That's my two out of three rule. I've written it in stone. I will not be swayed. Hold on. What if you have one of those Jags that or Jazz Masters that has the bridge but uh they've replaced all of the the uh strangle circuit and whatever with a three-way switch so you've only got some of the hardware but does it have the 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 pickups no so like a jaguar what no, about i'm the- not counting wiring i'm counting wiring as part of the uh, of the pickups i'm not car- counting it i'm talking about hardware as far as bridge and trend okay um, so yeah, oh, that would be body hardware. So Basically, you think, in this so you scenario, think all of these Fender HH models aren't really because usually when they make like the HH Jaguar, they're, they're they they they're they put in a tunematic or a just a no. I don't think I don't think they're true offsets. Shame on you, Fender. I think you get that, that you get two out of three. You get one exception: the meatloaf rule. <laughs> You get one exception, and that means you get to you get to mix up your offset guitar in one unique way for yourself. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And but you have to keep two of those ways for it to continue to uh, hold its offset license. You you change two things, and you've lost that license. I mean, you change beyond that, you change three things. What do you even have anymore? Stratocaster. You have a Strat, but like. Oh, let's do it in reverse. You take a strat. Okay. You take a strat. You put, uh, you put Mustang pickups in it. They're mm-hmm. not even mm-hmm. Jazzmaster or Jaguar pickups. You put Mustang pickups in it. It's only got one out of three. Now you put a Jazzmaster bridge and trim on it. Now it's an offset. They came out with that strat. It was a strat body. Mm-hmm, with mm-hmm. with a set of three Jaguar pickups and a, and a Jazzmaster bridge 
and and tram unit. That was an offset. Did you just describe the Fender Cyclone? No. <laughs> I'm talking about that cyclone par- has a paranormal with. or whatever par- parallel universe. Wait, one. so what the hell is a cyclone? A cyclone is an offset. No, it's not. Is it an offset? That's not an offset. Well, the original one was an offset because oh, the, the original one had, the original the jag one had pickups. Jaguar pickups. This is not an offset because it has strat pickups and a strat bridge. <laughs> I don't like this game. <laughs> That, I, this is my personal rule, I guess. That's how I feel in my heart. That's how I feel about offsets. You get two out of three options on there before it stops being an offset. In spirit. I mean, technically the body is still offset, but so are BC Ridges. You know what, man? What? <laughs> this episode is brought to you by Chase Plus Audio. That's right, Steve. They make pedals more creative than you are with That's a digital a brain and a digital heart, except for the Dark World, which has a digital heart, too. Um, you messed that up really hard. Digital brain in a analog analog brain, digital brain in an analog heart. You said digital. You said digital brain, digital heart twice. Dang it! Look, <laughs> most guys. chaseless pedals have a digital brain and an analog heart. The the dark world has a digital brain Look, and a digital this heart. All, this is a reverb. It needs this to is have all both. I'm saying. Go to chaseplusaudio.com, get on their mailing list, buy a pedal. Can you believe we talked about onset guitars for over half an hour? Yeah. We didn't even talk about onset guitars. We ended up talking about offset guitars. That was the plan. Was that the plan? Yeah. Huge thanks to Chase Bliss for continuing to sponsor this nonsense that we all enjoy. And if you would also like to support this nonsense, you can head on over to patreon.com where for as little as $1 a month, you can support this nonsense. All right. This ad was sent by Nick. Was it Nick Orman? Michael Krause. I already forget which one it is. It's the match set. The match set. It was sent by Jeremy Talcott. Jeremy Talcott. I well, Talcott? was just guessing. Uh, just guessing. Oh my gosh. Uh, These guitars. Go. This says uh, Telecaster style guitar and precision style bass completely built. One pickup, one volume on each guitar. Just need to connect pickup to volume pot and input jack. Easy to do. We'll connect if serious about buying. The reason I don't connect is because I don't want to use them. Never been used. Have them hanging in my garage studio. Want to keep in excellent condition. Both have been clear coated with a polyurethane fish. That does not make any sense. It doesn't give us a lot of confidence. Oh, I don't want to use these, so I haven't wired them up. It's that's the you did all of this, and the thing that takes maybe twenty minutes each guitar, probably less because it's one pickup and one knob on each. Yeah. A five minute job each guitar. You didn't do that part, no. but you did the rest. Legitimately, you will spend assuming that all the routing is there, which Just it looks say like it's say you're, you're afraid to solder. You're gonna spend more time warming up your iron than you are soldering. Like you will spend more time setting up, warming up like war- setting up, heating up your iron, and then afterwards tinning your iron for storage and letting it cool down, then you will soldering the we, four wires needed for this. We haven't even started talking about these bonkers guitars. Oh yeah. They're made and we of- are, we are stuck on the fact that this person, this is my theory. This person is, has a phobia of soldering. That is the only reason he is afraid of solder. On yeah. a deep clinical level, yeah. and I'm not yeah. going to fault him for that. That a- is apparently that is something in his psyche that yeah, is he, a, is a he medical is, condition. He is afraid of solder, but he is not afraid of splinters. <laughs> this guitar <laughs> is made out of particle board. Yes, like that fat, chunky, gluey particle board, and weirdly, it works. It's pretty. It's weirdly really pretty. He didn't get the body shapes right at all, but the look works in a way that I am not ready for. You know what? Uh, this is in L- this is in Los Angeles. I think that someone should buy this because it does look good, and I think in the next five to ten years, Fender is going to do something like oh my this, gosh. and you're someone, and then you can take what you bought for three hundred and fifty dollars. And say this is a Fender prototype. <laughs> <laughs> I I don't want a guitar's entire body to be made out of this, but say a thin cap on mm-hmm, the top mm-hmm. of the guitar, it could look really cool. And if you made those chips out of 
you know, out of a wood that had a lot of kind of like figuring and shine to it, mm-hmm. this could be even extra pretty. Like the headstocks look really cool. The headstocks too. is cool. The execution of the body and the construction is really rough on these. But I'm sold on that look. You know, Ryan, you said it. You you just said uh, if they made these chips out of like figured pieces and whatever, and and I agree with you. But hear me out. Here we go. They made these the chips out of tortillas. <laughs> then uh, if you got hungry, you had a little you know snack. What? You don't come to me with ruffles on these chips. I'm not interested. I need those ruffles. You know, <laughs> ruffles have ridges. <laughs> I got to dip all that sour cream and onion, you know? This is, do you do, you do sour cream and onion? No. I no. didn't think so. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a nacho cheese boy through and through. <laughs> I, uh, I, show, I showed Melissa our, uh, the order because, you know, I, I came, I went home. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I was Our like, Mexican food order. Um, I was tonight. like, here's our Mexican food order. And she goes, she goes, first she goes, oh, the fish tacos are for Ryan. And I was like, and then she reads more. She's like, wait. There's no sour cream on the carnitas. I don't know which one's for Ryan. We're not a sour cream family. Yeah, well, she yeah, she assumed that the removal of the of the the they call it tartar sauce. It's not tartar it's sauce. Not tartar sauce. But it's whatever the white sauce is that sometimes it's, tacos. sometimes it's a yogurt sauce. Um, the the here's the, here's my thing, and this is a total sidetrack on this entire episode. We're talking about sour cream now. Yeah. Um, I got a, every now and then I'll get a burrito and they forget to take the sour cream off, even though I mm-hmm. said it, or I forget to request to have it not put on there and I get a burrito with sour cream. Sometimes the burrito is absolutely swimming in sour cream. That's my biggest problem. Mm. I, I'm not fond of the white stuff. I'm sorry. But if I get a burrito or a fish taco, that just has a, a healthy little squirt in there. Mm-hmm. I'm fine. I'm fine. I it's it's not off putting. You to just me. don't want to drown I don't, in sour cream. I would much rather have it not in there at all than risk having a hot doughy tube of white mm-hmm. goop. <laughs> you know? Like I don't it I don't seek it out. I don't like that fl- I'm not into that flavor. I'm not into the texture. But if there's a little in there, it's fine. It's like a melted cheese. But some places will just go hog wild with the sour cream yeah. cocking gun and just <laughs> let's fill this thing up like a like a uh like a cannoli <laughs> like a mexican cannoli full of sour cream no thank you sir how much would you pay for this match set that they're asking 350 dollars for nothing <laughs> i am not gonna i'm not gonna pay for this yeah. do they have a price on it 350 dollars for both yeah that's oh, yeah, only 175 dollars each there's no way he built the next, right? There are parts next and he put a veneer on the headstock. I don't, I think so. There's no way he built those necks. Looking at the way the bodies are cut, he did not, he did not make the necks. Let's be honest. Um, so you could make the argument that there's parts here to salvage. No, I think that base. No, you're wrong. I think the shape of the base is more pleasing than the shape of the, the guitar. Yeah. Um, I think that could be pulled off. Um, the guitar, looks mutated its body shape is cut really really mm-hmm. funky yeah I, here's here's the thing i'm i'm not going to buy these but i'm going to take these pictures to a trusted builder a trusted luthier mm-hmm. and say this concept but better and i will pay you upwards of 750 dollars. <laughs> that's not enough but <laughs> but like i this concept I want to see done well because I think it's cool. Give it an orange uh, pit guard and make it Home Depot themed. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> <laughs> oh. Make it like make a pit guard out of a Home Depot bucket. <laughs> I'm trying to think how much work it would be to like unbend that. Do you know that? You know that a, a really big thing. Is to take home depot buckets. Do I buckets. know a really big no, no, thing? No, no, no. Not not the orange ones, but the white the white buckets from Home Depot, which are the same material. Do mm-hmm. you know what those get used for? No. Before they were readily commercially available, uh, people would buy those and remold them into Star Trooper helmets. What? Yeah. 
Storm, oh, Stormtrooper storm storm helmets. helmets. Like that was the material that like all these like hobby uh, cosplay guys would start with. They would get those plastic buckets because mm-hmm. it's the right plastic material and they ha- would have molds and they would heat it up and vacuum form it into these molds to make their own helmets. And uh, I forget what it's called, but there's that, but like the, the battalion of like zombie Fu- stormtroopers. Storm yeah, well, yeah, yeah. A lot of those guys started out with their reject molds where the bucket didn't quite fill it right. Oh, and it was all funky. So it, so that's how they, I, so I don't, I haven't seen the zombie re- regiment or whatever, but I, right. I know that there's various, but I think if you regiments. cut, if you cut one of those plastic buckets and are able to, to warm it up gently mm-hmm. with say a heat gun, it'll eventually relax and lay flat. Mm-hmm. And you can probably do something creative to make sure it gets all the way flat so that you could cut a picture. You need to like bed. sous vide that bucket. Yes, yes. Slow, yeah. slow, slow temperature rising. Slow, low temperature. Get it soft. For a long time. And then finish it on a hot grill. Yeah. yeah. That's, that's what you do. <laughs> but yeah, I cool concept, but the execution isn't worth paying for these. Like he didn't even think it was worth wiring them up. And he wants... I know. 350 for both. It's like it's like he knows that they suck and he's like if I wire these up I'm going to play them and then if I play them I'm going to want to make them better. Right. That's what it that's what the vibe is. Like how is that material any different than a composite or even a ply or even how is that different the, they came out with that SG that was the multi-layered the uh, zoot col- the zoot Friggin' Prisma guitars. How is this different than Prisma guitars? I mean, this is all, at least those, like the Zoot and the Prisma are in uniform directed layers. Yes, they are aesthetic grade woods that they're starting out with, but they are still layers of wood and glue. Thin layers of wood. But this and glue. isn't even like layers per se. This is a it's chips. This is somebody took a wood chipper. They th- put a normal piece of wood through a wood chipper, and then they took those wood chips. The early Talmans were, were MDF. Were right? MDF. This is better yeah. than MDF. Technically, it has this more, might be better than this. Has it, more wood than it, MDF. It has longer wood fibers, which we know scientifically. Long wood fibers is where the tone That's comes from. That's where the from. tone comes from. Uh, <laughs> it has longer wood fibers than the Ibanez Talman, the original Talmans. I hate everything about this now. <laughs> I'm saying it's a viable guitar material, and it looks kind of cool. And under a clear gloss like that, I bet it's shimmery. It's like <laughs> it's the wood version of, of Moto, of Mother Toilet Seat. Okay, that's fair. It's the that's wood fair. version of a pearl pit guard. <laughs> this is a different kind of quilt. PRS. Oh my gosh. PRS. Get wood chips from your tin top, you know, figured maple. You know, you're chipping stuff away. Mm-hmm. You're mm-hmm. chipping that all away. You're hand, you, in your in your custom shop. You're carving that away. There's chips laying laying on the ground. Pick them up. Put them in a thing with a bunch of glue. Press them flat. Make a top for a guitar out of those figured maple wood chips. It'll look cool. <laughs> Next sponsor. Um, yeah, we'll do some sponsor spots first. Uh, you want to talk about demonic machines? Yeah, let's talk about demonic machines. I got three pedals from them right here. The $50 fuzz. Have you been wanting to get into fuzz, but you're afraid of spending too much money? This one's $50. It's only got one knob, and it's definitely a fuzz. It's definitely a big old sound and fuzz pedal, and you can have lots of fuzzy fun with a $50 fuzz. Or you just want to have crazy octave sounds. Give me that, Steve. I told you not to touch that. Uh, <laughs> there's the Erica Strip, which is just octave sounds. It's not a lot of fuzz, but it is a lot of octave. This is actually really fun to combine with other fuzzes, with mm-hmm, other pedals. Mm-hmm. And you can put octave before or after in between your gain stacking and stuff like that. Put it in a weird place in your pedal board. It's glitchy. It's weird. It's psychedelic. It's like the the soul of psychedelia with this pedal. And then there's the Dragonaut, which is a full blown out, like tweakable distortion. You can blend in between all kinds of different distortion voices with this. And we're also sponsored by Big Ear. Huge thanks to Demonic Machines. 
Head on over to demonicmachines.com. Check out all their stuff at the link down below, but also go check out Big Ear. Check out all our sponsors. We've got a sponsors. We've got a trifecta of pedal sponsors lately. Big Ear pedals. Hopefully they're sold out of these by now. But you know what? Even if they are, don't pay $1,000. Don't pay $10,000. Don't pay a million dollars for one of these because it is a production pedal and there's going to be more. They're going to keep making them. Who knows how long they're going to keep making them, but they're going to keep making gonna, them. I heard a rumor that they're going to make them until people don't want them anymore. They're going to make them until there's more pizza pedals on the planet than there there is pizza. And we all know how much pizza is on the planet. It's our greatest natural resource. So head on over to BigEarPedals.com. Get on the mailing list. That way you mm-hmm. know when stuff is coming out. Follow them on all their social media. You want to open some of this stuff, man? Yeah, we got more, uh, got more mail to open up. Let's let's let you go into that. But no, let's 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 start with a bigger one. All here. right. Yeah, we got another package here that we're pretty sure came from the Flatwoods Monster. Yeah, that's what it says. Uh, they sent us stuff when we were doing the uh, the Azor giveaway. They sent us a really cool T-shirt and a bunch of stickers and pins and stuff. The Flatwoods Monster, apparently some kind of alien that came down and visited some people, or and, uh, or has, or an owl, or an owl. Though, though an owl does not wear a green dress. I mean, I know an owl that wears a purple dress. What? I I don't. I was I was just trying to sound cool. Let's Did see. I sound what cool? Is, what is this? Whoa. Uh oh. What do we have here? This is a Flatwoods Monster Dream Rocket. What is a Dream Rocket? I don't know, but we got some Flatwoods Braxy Blonde Ale. What? Oh, man. I wish we'd opened this first episode. We could have thrown it right in the fridge and been drinking it second episode. I do not understand what this is, but it's like a plastic thing. I have to look up that. And it's got, it's made in Japan. Let me see. Oh, this is cool. What is this the sort of thing where I'm not supposed to take it out of the plastic packaging? I don't know. I don't know what a dream rocket is. I like this way more than I thought I would like something like this. Oh, no. I like a weird plastic toy, guys. <laughs> I want to put lights in it or something. Oh, my gosh. We've got a bunch of shirts in here, Steve. Dream Rocket is a modern Japanese vinyl toy manufacturer. <laughs> Poster here says, when we were cryptids. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. <laughs> I need to let you guys know something. Uh, you know, there's some cryptid... Uh, stuff here. I I did graphic design for a a game years back. A couple of years back. Uh, I'll put a link to it down below. I've been meaning to buy a version of it for myself because they never sent me the version of the game that I designed. It's like a card and dice game, and it's cryptid theme. And I did all these really cool like cartoon versions of various cryptids for it. <laughs> I'm gonna wear I'm gonna wear some of these shirts, and Steve's gonna wear them too. I'm going to let you pick what you want out of these, Steve. This one's Steve. I think Steve is going to pick this one. Oh, that's cool. I think I will pick that one. I knew it. I knew that was your style. Uh, yeah, you might want that one, too. It's the uh, after what is the production company that plays uh, with this is part of it's they do the Simpsons. This is that oh uh, yeah, I forget what they're called. Braxy Bazaar. Oh my gosh. We're gonna get we're gonna get cryptid stuff for the rest of our lives. I'm I'm you know, two is starting a trend. The Braxton County Paranormal uh Oh, this has the arms move. The arms move, Steve. It all moves. All right. Okay, we got we got one more thing here to open. Uh, what do you think is in here? Some sort of um, flat beer. This is what flat beer is packed in. We already got some <laughs> round beers. This is the flat beer I've been hearing about. This is for other uh, Braxton County Paranormal Museum and the Braxton County Bigfoot Museum. What do we have here? 
Ryan and Steve, you guys crack me up. Seriously, I'm a bit older than you guys, but some of your obscure references, musical or otherwise, really make me laugh. I generally listen to your shows while I am working out, trying to stay alive. Your show makes the time drag on and on and on. Just kidding. I appreciate your slightly <laughs> tilted view of the guitar world. If you decide to do a How to Surf Rock series, count me in. As a thank you for all the enjoyment you've given us following your guitar adventures, we'd like to share copies of our new album, Big Four, His Age 2. If you like the album, feel free to share any of the music on your show. We own all the rights. This is from... Uh... Oh, okay. This is from Rex Anderson. Rexomatic.com. Let's see what we've got in here. There is an album. Oh, that's cool. Cool looking art there. It looks like there is a CD included as well. Do you have a CD player, Steve? In my car. I do too, but mine has never worked. Oh, Here, weird. I'll let you have the CD. I don't currently own a functioning CD player, but I do own a functioning vinyl player. So I'll keep the vinyl. You keep the CD. And if you ever... Do you have a vinyl player, Steve? Oh, there's stickers and stuff. Oh, are there here stickers? Too. Here, give me one of those stickers. Those are stickers. We should probably pre-open stuff and then show what we got instead of spending all this time opening things. The Rexomatic record stickers. This is going to go on the cyclone. Very cool. If you guys want to send us anything, the address has been up here for a while now. Write it down. Send us something. It goes to a PO box. And we will present it on the show and show what we've been receiving. Where should I put it, Steve? I'll let you do the honors. Oh, you're putting it on the pit guard, too. I think it's that's a little right spot to just get a little lip of pit guard on there. I wasn't planning on covering the pit guard, but I like your style. We're going for it. The goal is to get all the paint covered, and then I'll give it away somehow to somebody. All right, what are we doing now? This ad was sent by Mark Jabroom. Oh, yeah. It's a Tele-D caster. Tele uh, it's a Mika, Mika custom art guitar. That's too good. Uh, it's a 22 fret da, 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 body deal. Oh, man, this is in Dutch. Dutch. All right, here's all you need to know. It's 240 euros. Uh, it's basically a Telecaster, but the body is made out of epoxy. It has uh, a bunch of LEDs in the epoxy and it has eight. It works off of nine or sorry. It works off of three AA batteries and it's got like eight different operation modes for these LEDs. So this is like kind of like the LEDs you got up here, yeah, I yeah. guess where you can like change the different operation modes, uh, combination in wave, sequential, slow go, chasing flash, slow fade, twinkle flash, steady on and off are the nine off is a mode, right? Off is a mode. Yeah. Um, my guitar, I think it looks cool. My guitar pedals have two modes on and off. <laughs> I think it looks really cool. I I don't dislike this at all. There's some, the, the 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 one random thing that's catching my eye is what's going on with the spacing between the volume and the tone control. Like what is oh. what is happening there? I it's they they decided to put the probably because there's so much stuff going on they did a body side mount the that they did not okay. side mount the jack. Okay, that In makes fact, sense. Because the body um is like filled with epo epoxy or whatever maybe they couldn't like maybe it wasn't uh as, as straight that straightforward of a mount i've got a facebook friend that makes guitar congratulations right that, i know i finally got one uh that makes uh guitar straps that are full of leds this guitar would be perfect oh. for that uh what is it it's um her name's Haley. oh rocket rocket Rocket, Rocket gear. Rocket gear. Go look that's at a, that's like that's a up and coming brand. Right? I know. Yeah. I have a friend. You made it sound like I, I know. No, I, I have know. a well, friend they're, they're who does all, this. They're thing. all. Fr that's what we call them on Facebook. They're all friends. No, like I've I never know. Met, I've never met her or hung out with her. But like I, I remember the last Nam. Like every booth had. 
I have an associate on Facebook. No, Is that I'm what just you saying, wanted like, from me? I'm just saying like the way that you led into it made it sound like it was someone who just does something that and it's no one someone that no one else I have has a, heard of. It's called a friend on Facebook. That's what it's called. If okay, I right. said, if I had said buddy, uh-huh. I've got a buddy on Facebook, that uh-huh. would have been a different connotation. Right, right. Does it? What's a buddy? What's a, how <laughs> Haley, if you're watching right now, are we friends? <laughs> I'm just saying. I'm just saying, Ryan. I'm, you don't have to answer that. I'm just saying. It's fine. I've got this. I've got this friend, right? And and sometimes, you know, I think he he mostly just like rides his bike around, but sometimes he makes guitar pedals. Uh, you know. I, I don't know. He, he's like six. He's like six foot and seventeen inches tall. You're talking about Josh Scott. Yeah, yeah. You know, he's just he's just this guy. You no, know, he he makes pedals sometimes. And you're saying he's your friend on, on Facebook? Okay. I believe Josh Scott is your friend. He's my friend. <laughs> I'm just saying. Like, I was the I preface was, of it. <laughs> I was Marco Poloing with Josh Scott today. This story isn't hitting me the way that you planned. <laughs> No, I'm just saying. Like, <laughs> this hypothetical isn't really going the way you thought it would. I'm sorry. It's going, I, it's just, I think it's too sophisticated. Either of us could could be friends with Josh Scott, and it's believable. Either of us could be friends with Haley, and it's believable. I'm not friends with Haley, but we, you know, I am friends with people who are Haley. friends with Haley who aren't you. Will you be friends with Steve? Oh my gosh! Not- Steve is awaiting your friendship. All right, anyway. You can, you can make the first move and friend Steve on Facebook before the, uh, before the before Facebook disappears. You got anything else on this telecaster? No, you so just much, think it's cool? Someone should buy it. It looks cool. I like I like the whole project. I think it is from the pictures, it looks like it's well done. They o- It's only 240 euros, which I'm assuming is like 300 US. I'm just uh, taking a wild that. stab at that. Um Clearly, it looks like the hardware is parts hardware. Who knows the pedigree of the neck or anything else? But for 240 euro or whatever, 300 US, Mm -hmm. give or take, it's a cool look. And most of us don't play good enough to deserve a guitar that plays good anyways. So even if it plays like crap, but you need a stage prop, this is a beautiful looking stage prop. And I bet it looks really cool with all those lights going. So yeah, I sign off on it. Also, rocketmusicgear.com. Go check out those straps. <laughs> oh, you're talking about the company owned by my friend Haley. Yeah. Yeah. All right. We got one last ad. This is from Paul Weller. It is a era travel strat, 1970s era customized Fender Stratocaster. Uh, as is with minor blemishes or for original parts. It says Fender customized by Harmonic Designs. Um. Is this, this but the person who posted this, uh, uh, Paul Weller, his, his caption on the post was, I don't think any of those words are true. <laughs> so I will say this neck looks nice. It doesn't look terrible. Uh, so 1970s era, maybe not true. Uh, <laughs> customized. No, that part's kind of true. Fender Stratocaster. Those two parts were not so sure. But my... Can you guess my beef on this, Steve? It is $270. Um, well, given the amount of parts that is that are left and the current price of a full Fender Stratocaster, it can't be the price. The price seems correct. <laughs> my- I'm just saying it's like half of a guitar. Right, right. And it's half of well, the price. Gu- guitars, of a- are, guitars are priced by the pound. We all know that. <laughs> yeah. Um, my issue with this is that you can buy guitars that are commercially made to be this. Oh yeah. That won't be wonky. The way you can kind of tell that cut is definitely a little bit wonky. Yeah. And the headstock has likely been mangled to be a new shape with uh someone's stenciled on like logo on there. Traveler Guitars makes this and it's the same price. I think they're like 250 bucks or something like that. Is Harmonic Design a company? Harmonic Design is a pickup company. Okay. There's at least a pickup company called Harmonic Design. 
it might be the same company. It might not. It might that might be a decal from the pickup manufacturer or whatever. Um, well, it says Fender cust Fender customized by Harmonic Design. Maybe maybe it is a pickup guitar, but like I'm saying, Traveler Guitars makes this, and I'm I'm gonna look up the price right now. I'm pretty sure. Oh, two two ninety at Sweetwater. Two ninety, close enough for the one that's like a Strat body. But it's commercially made to be that way and it's not cut all wonky yeah. and like who knows what the pedigree of any of these parts are the neck looks like it might be fine but we don't know which version of fine you know <laughs> and you you buy a traveler guitar mm -hmm. new used or whatever and you can go online and you can read people's opinions on it you can watch videos you can go try them yourself in stores before you buy. And then when you want to sell it, it has a brand behind it. Yeah. And let's be honest. You're not buying those things for the, for their looks. You're buying them for the utility of having a small bodied guitar. That looks exactly like this. It's the same exact cut, just not home. If done. this was a seventies guitar, this would be worth actually, I think would still be worth a lot of money. If it was a seventies fender. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, the headstock has been mangled, but I think it could be rescued and turned into a Telecaster headstock. I think there's enough wood left that you could, that a, a talented person could reshape that to be a somewhat convincing yeah, Telecaster I, I shape. Yeah. They might have to add a little bit of wood, but it is salvageable. It would at least be like a saw. It'd be like a weak Telecaster. So if this was a true 1970s Fender neck, what they could do, here's what I would do, if this, if that was true, if I had the woodworking skills, I would rejoin wood to this, try to match the grain as best I can, not be too worried about it, mm -hmm. do a painted headstock on it. So from the front, you'd never know. Right. But then like the body, like if you're buying this for the body, why? This neck does look really nice. It's hard to tell if it is... I'm just saying, like, it's got that, like, nice kind of tint lacquer on it. No, I, I get it. It's hard to tell the quality of it from these pixels. Oh, yeah. Though. No, I'm not saying it it is nice. I'm just saying it looks but nice. But it also looks nice in the way that it could be, like, a 80s or 70s knockoff Yeah, guitar. it, it kind of gives me, um, like, Honer vibes. Yeah, Honer. I was thinking, like, Memphis. You know, those kind of pawn shop guitars of the 90s that we yeah. would run into. So, yeah, I don't recommend buying that for 270 if if you're in the area. Oh, 260. On 260. Uh, you, you would recommend 260. <laughs> no. If you're, if you're in the area and you're curious about that concept, I would offer half just across the board. Because then it's like that amount of money, like, you know, if... if if you never get it back, it's like you, you, you had fun for a couple of weekends playing with this thing. Like it's like watching a movie. You, you, you pay for your fun, you know, but above 200, above two, 250. No, no, go buy the real thing. Go buy the thing that has, you know, like current retailers backing it for returns mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. stuff like that, you know, that you can sell it again and get some of your money back based on it having a name, a brand name. So that's my take. You want to get us out of here, Steve? Let's get out of here. This song was sent by Ian Ferguson. He says, end of show song. It's called Enthralled in Aquarius. It has guitars. It has guitars! <laughs>
I'll say one thing about it, then you say one thing, and we'll go back and forth. Okay. That was a jam. It has guitars. That was like three songs for the price of one. It has drums also. <laughs> I liked it a lot. You should have gone to see Cursive, man. <laughs> Is that what cursive is like? I th- in my like this. Is I called, got invited to go see cursive, and I, I didn't go do it. This is heavier than cursive, but cursive definitely does a lot of like intentionally dissonant. Uh, you know what I was hearing you know, of hearing a lot in there? Mars Volta. No. Okay, I got big Mars Volta vibes. I could see that too. I could see that, but something about the melody lines and the way they would progress. Hmm. Was very Manor Astro Man. I don't know if you've ever listened to them. Not in a while. Uh, but like I'm listening to this and I'm hearing your you know your very modern kind of like uh, progressive email. What what would you call this? I don't know. But it is this this very kind of like you know technical. It's like it's very it's like math like math, math metal math metal. Uh, Prog metal. Math. I'm hearing it's a, very math. I'm hearing a lot of '90s surf in that. Yeah. Like. Oh, okay. Yeah. I was hearing riffs that was like, that might be a manner astro manner riff, <laughs> honestly. Or maybe it is a riff that they should use because it fits their whole thing. But I, I love the tempo of it. I love the way the parts developed. I love uh, the surprise little melody hooks. They were, there were hooks in there that I really dug. Solid work. Solid work. I like that a lot. Yeah, every, I, this is the, I think the... S- Second or third song that I think it's the third song that Ian sent. Every single one of them has been a yeah. big freaking banger. It has like almost like a like a chip tunes element to it. Yeah, yeah. Like a like a video game music. I mean, mm-hmm. I mean that in the highest compliment I can give. Yeah, totally excellent work. I love that. Bye, everyone. Stay grounded.